Thank you for joining me for another quick hits conversation. Today, I would like to talk about how to recover from a mistake. Wayne, kick us off. The immediate thought when I was pondering this was how much time do I have, which led to the whole idea of there's no such thing as failure, only feedback with the little asterisk that says, unless you have resource limitations, like usually time is the big one. Like, oh, we have a deadline. Oh, we only have one of these. We have to get it right. Right. So how do you recover from those sorts of mistakes? You do your best to prevent them up front and have a backup plan and move on as you know that. So the move on feels like such a tiny statement, but it's the big step. It's like, okay, first off, let's clear the emotional load that we just generated because we labeled it a mistake. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come and deal with whatever is actually happening in the situation. Mm. But like all these subjects, I've bagged up a load of stuff to say and Wayne's taken me off in a different direction. So <laughs> I'm going to roll with that. And uh, so I'm, th I'm thinking he took it to about time. Love that. And having the resources to cope with it. Love that, too. And then I'm thinking there are different types of mistake, aren't there? There's a sort of mistake that catches you out. Like, oh, no, did I? <gasps> and then there's a sort of mistake you sort of knew was coming uh, because you perhaps have maybe not done the right thing or just let it slip or something and you was you know having your back in mind it might come and it was a slow mistake as opposed to a quick mistake and I, and I don't know whether there's a different way to deal with those but it, it that when you brought in the time into the subject of mistakes that's where my where my head went I hate the ones where you the ones that catch you right out oh likely no they're the worst surely I drew from what Wayne said that planning helps you prepare so if you're planning well, you, you want to know that there's got to be room in that plan to adjust to mistakes if they happen. So I went to a very personal place when the question came out, how do I forgive myself for mistakes? Mm. And the only way I managed to do that is to be kind to myself. Or how do I recover from a mistake is to forgive myself. Mm. And sometimes forgiving Myself is not allowed unless I do the, the things that need to be done to deserve that forgiveness. Mm. So recovery can be different depending on what colossal mistake I chose to make. I think the recovery is also dependent on how you go into it, isn't it? You know, Wayne used the word resources. If you, if you go into it non-resilient uh, for whatever reason, mental health, tiredness, not drinking enough, stressed at work or whatever and the mistake comes in it can hit you a lot harder and therefore as you say Kristen you know the the recovery time can be longer because you're dealing with a, a already got a backlog of I don't know mistakes or whatever building up anyway so I think there's a there's a sort of journey isn't there there's a storyline of going into the mistake which influences the output there's also the manner in which the mistake takes place and then there's the journey on the way out which I think is what we're talking about which is how do I forgive myself for what I've done and I think there's a judgment piece to it as well. If you have a mistake that's easily recoverable, like I'm deadheading my flowers and I pinch off a bloom that's actually a healthy one and not, it's like, ah, oh, bummer. Oh, well, toss it away. Next, not, not a big deal. And then there's the mistakes like you were talking about, Tim, where they're shocking and they actually physically hurt. Like I, for me, I've had mistakes where I've literally, my stomach, my gut, my heart, everything kind of just clinches and it's like, <gasps> those are hard to get over because you have to first get rid of all the fight, flight, freeze, panic that is going through your body. That's, that's the hard part for me is kind of doing that inventory of calm down, calm down. I can't fix it if I'm panicking. <laughs> yeah, like leaving the handbrake off on your car. That's sort of a good example of that. You turn around and then that feeling of <gasps> as you watch it roll away, knowing that you, it's entirely you. Everything about it is you. There's nothing you, you can't hide from this one. Wherever it, wherever it lands, it lands. Oh. Yeah, not good. That's scary, yeah. There's another piece in there which comes in, which we, we have to include in this conversation, which is, of course, the happy mistake, which is this concept of turning a mistake into an opportunity. So I know I've used it in, I did a painting class once and the, and the guy who was there, who was the painter sort of said, if you're painting something intricately and you make a poor brush stroke or something, not that I was painting anything intricately, I would like to add, but if you make a poor brush stroke or something, you, you then change the picture to en encompass your mistake. So it, it evolves as you paint. 
Mm. Uh, and that way, when the mis- and this comes down to Kristen's preparation piece. If your mindset's good when you go in, and this brushstroke is hideous, it's suddenly what was a scene of the Sermon on the Mount becomes a UFO in space. If your <laughs> if your mistake's really oh, bad, my. but it doesn't matter because you've got at the end you've got a painting that you've painted. So in addition for, to preparing for it, it's expecting mistakes. If you have a mindset that tells you mistakes are going to happen and you prepare not necessarily for that particular mistake, but you prepare your mindset to realize that I'm going to handle mistakes by learning something from them or turning them on their edge somehow, I think that that helps you recover quicker. If you have a mindset that I don't make mistakes, I'm infallible, and I'm required to be perfect, then I think recovery could be very difficult. I think there was a piece there that needs to be called out more explicitly is the learning plan on making that a part of the recovery is right. You made a mistake. Okay. Is this a million dollar learning opportunity or is this a million dollars down the drain and you're going to do it again next week because everybody has millions to flush. Um, so yeah, making that part of the mindset of, okay, we have to do the things right now to triage to make sure that everything is not going to get worse. What do we need to learn from this on a longer scale to prevent it in the future to, you know, do all the fun things that come from that. And part of that learning definitely is how well did we manage our state coming into and out of this? So that, yeah, that's the question I was going to ask is let's, so we've left the handbrake off on our car is run over the neighbor's cat and taken out another neighbor's car, right? Oh! And we're, we're, st- we're there and we're gutted and we're feeling bad. What's the route to recovery? How do we get on top of ourselves and not just crawl next door and sob and, you know, and just re- become a collapsed mess? How is, what advice do we have in that situation? Take responsibility. Right. Hide, hiding in the, in the corner is just denial. You take responsibility, recovery is going to happen a lot smoother. Hmm. Yeah, I think and... you have a funeral for the cat. I think that's probably a good <laughs> idea. You apologize. You pull out your insurance papers to help pay for the neighbor's car and yours. Managing the emotion in the moment. And I know for me, that's the hardest part. When a, when a big mistake happens, managing that panic. And I fortunately, I'm, I've gotten to be pretty good at it. In really big, colossal spaces, managing panic, I'm very good at it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this right now. We'll panic later. But when it's smaller things, that voice in my head how that's dumb. Why did you do that? That quieting that is harder than managing panic. And that was actually kind of the direction I went. Tim put that out there. I'm like, what? One of the ways that I would do that is to give myself some emotional distance and say, okay, if I walked into this situation and someone else had gotten us here, what would I be doing? So it immediately has that distance of, okay, it's not me. I'm not beating someone up over this. It's like, okay, we're here now what do we do yes so there's a there's an so there's an emotional management there's an acceptance piece and and as kristen said there there's a responsibility piece isn't there about this is me i have done this but but and it's terrible uh but i've now got to do what's right whatever that is to to get the best out of get some strength out of this i guess and i think worst case scenario you hide you lie you try to bury it. You pretend it didn't happen. I think that's the worst way to recover from mistakes. I'm pretty sure Wayne was the last to get out of the car, if I remember <laughs> rightly. <laughs> yes, but going out the boot doesn't mean that I pulled the handbrake. <laughs> These are not related. But you told your neighbor the cat does not belong outside. So that's really the neighbor's fault that the cat got hurt. <laughs> there we go, you see. So we, yeah, we're already creating storylines, aren't we? And it, it, is it easier to do that, do we think? And sometimes it really is, isn't it? Blame oh, is so much it. easier than accountability. Ah, but I think it prolongs things because now you're going to have the arguments and the problems that you've caused because you've delayed it. So I'm not sure. It's easier in, the, in that moment, but not for long. Yeah. Exactly. And that is one of those keys that I have found over and over again is when you're in the moment, fight or flight kicks in, it's too late. You had to have done some of the prep work up front. And I think having this conversation is one of those ways that you start preparing yourself for, okay, I, chances are pretty good. I'm going to make a mistake sometime between now and when I'm leaving this planet. Okay. 
There's a culture. That's our 10 minutes, guys. I have to cut it off. Sorry about that. I love having this conversation with you. We will do it again real soon.